and welcome to this next episode, episode two of the new season of Diversifying Data. I am Raki Sharma, as I'm hoping some of you know from watching previous episodes. And if you're new here, I'm really excited for some new viewers. Today, I have two powerhouse women. And I feel like every time I get two women on this podcast, I'm like two powerhouse women, but it is true. So I would like to introduce firstly, Dana James Edwards, head of DEI at Kubrick. It's about time. We've been waiting for your energy. So I'm very happy to welcome you to the podcast and to Kubrick as well. Yay, I'm happy to be here at both. At both, exactly. Um, And then I have my friend and KA consultant at Kubrick, which stands for Kubrick Advanced and Kick Ass. There we go. <laughs> she was never gonna. I know Hazel too well. I'm she was saying never that. gonna Dana, say that. Dana can pull it off. I can't. You were never gonna say it. I know. We had to do it. Um, but Hazel uh, is one of our top consultants, working at a, a really large aviation client of ours and um, leading a squad of, I believe it's eight junior consultants six now. Six junior consultants, oh, six. but then other people around the <laughs> account. So you're, you're basically just like shepherding people from all different departments all together, which I love. Um, well, it's a pleasure to have both of you on the podcast today. Um, it's an important one. It's a it's a really important one. I'm glad we can get into some really hard hitting uh, topics. So the theme for the podcast is gender equity. And given that's also the theme for International Women's Day, which is coming up, um, I thought that we could just have a really good in-depth discussion from two different uh, women's perspectives and just answering some of the questions that people may have around the first thing that probably pops into people's head when they hear gender equity. What is it? How does it differ to gender equality? So Dana, I know you got some thoughts about this. I'm going to, I'm going to defer this over to you. I have all the thoughts. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So gender equality is where we want to get to. It's our end goal, right? Mm -hmm. And that is the place where your gender doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You have the same ease of access to resources and opportunities as everyone else, no matter what your gender is. That's where we want to be. Right. We ain't there. (laughs) So gender equity is the set of practices that help us get there. Gender equity acknowledges that historically women have been disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. And it's not just enough to say, we'll give this to this gender. Let's use male as the example. We'll give the exact same to women. No, we actually have to make up for those historic inequities and injustices to be able to bring women up to the level. So for a short period of time, well, please, a short period of time, (laughs) we have to almost give an advantage to women, Mm. but that advantage is about ultimately bringing them up to the same level as men. And women, we're talking about women for International Women's Day, but also those who are in between. So our gender fluid and gender non-binary people, for example, Mm. it's all about raising the level for them. So on the outside, it might look like it's unfair. Why are you, why a woman getting seven chips? Yeah. And, um, right? But ultimately, it's about redressing some of that imbalances that happened previously to be able to bring the levels up. So equality is not, it's not happening right now, right? It's the end goal, right? To get there, we need to focus right now Mm -hmm. on what it means to be gender equitable. Wow. That to me is probably the most concise all-encompassing definition I've heard of it because like you were saying before when you google gender equity even just to get the generic definition what happens Dana tell our listeners well what happens is you get a whole bunch of stuff on gender equality yeah right um and and we both found this didn't we I use the minusing equality approach to kind of get some resources to come to the fore yeah and even then the pickings were slim right I ended up having to change my search engine and stuff it wasn't working yeah next time I'll use quotes yes which is exactly what I do yeah I feel like you are the algorithm data queen Um, yeah so you know googling things that's a skill yeah it's a mad skill but yeah I think I had the same problem it would I'd google it and it would always say so data equality and I think you are very, your definition was so on, it's exactly what I found. Mm-hmm. And it was basically equality is the end, mm-hmm. but equity is the means by which we get there. 
it's yeah. such a good way of putting it. But yeah, I think the fact that you can't even Google it without people just saying, oh yeah, just equality, that's what we mean. Yeah. It's yeah. part of the problem. Definitely. Is people aren't understanding that the stuff you have to do to in get order to, to get there. Absolutely, because yeah. it's like taking steps to get to the end goal. I will be perfectly honest, I didn't actually know what gender equity was, whether it was a, a definition for something, whether it was a mechanism for something. And I'm wondering if you, Hazel, even being, you know, in this world, had you heard of gender equity and what was your knowledge prior to Googling it? Was it similar to that or did you have an understanding? Um, I think similar, but 100% a lot of my knowledge was on data equality yeah. and that's what people talk about. Mm -hmm. It's in the news, yes. it's always, okay, we'll get to equality, but actually in order to get there, there's things that might make people uncomfortable. Like yeah. you were saying, if you say, okay, women are gonna get these advantages, mm -hmm when actually it's an advantage to get to being on a level playing, level field, playing field and then yeah. you can get equality. I That's think exactly it. we, yeah, we kind of assume that if you say we're gonna improve data equality, or not data, gender equality, mm -hmm. um, then we can do all of these things, but actually you're not doing any of the actions to get data equity into there as well yeah i think that's part of the problem yeah and i guess now we're touching on it let's just get into it when people say <laughs> women are now more advanced like what why why is it fair why do we have to address the historical inaccuracies why can't we just aim for everyone being on an equal level playing field now what why do we need to give women that advantage give people that advantage to get to the same point now all right, personal story time. I'm going in. Let's there, do right? it. Go in. So for it. I am from Trinidad in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And when I was a girl growing up, every time I said something positive about myself or was self congratulatory, I would get immediately told self praise is no praise at all. Be modest, yes. right? Yeah. Let someone else give you a compliment. It's not good to compliment yourself and give self praise. Yeah. Then all of a sudden after university, I want to compete in the UK job market to get a job. To do this, you have to be able to speak really positively about yourself, your achievements and your accomplishments. Yeah. But I have been told my entire life up until that point that that is not what you do. Right. So saying Dana, you and this next person have the exact same equal opportunity to impress an interviewer mm. and that is fair you both have the equal opportunity but is it equal though because the person who i'm going up against has had years of not being told that mm. maybe they've had years of being told amazing job yeah. great talking about yourself you know they've had encouragement right. to do that this is my years of having no encouragement yeah. in order for that to really be fair yeah. I need an advantage. I need a coach, someone to work with me. Mm. I need more practice to get me up to that level, yeah. to be able to remediate for the years yeah. that I didn't have that input. Yeah. How can you disagree that? No, I, I do agree. And I, but I know that people who examine things on a very high mm. level way of looking at things, they just want instant solutions. And I think that that really is the issue when you're trying to correct historical inaccuracies is people want the solution now. now. <laughs> and that's why I think the the words gender equality are just banded about. Like we we have, you know, 40% female rate, you know, they, they like statistics, they like figures, they like instant gratification mm -hmm. because look, doing, quite honestly, doing that level of work to correct inaccuracies and unfair advantages and giving people their due, I think, um, requires a lot more work, clearly, a lot more. Um, a lot more. So anything I would say from a more, I guess, more junior perspective, fresh into your career um, as well, because I know you both have come from hardcore consulting backgrounds as well. So we've had one personal story time here. Uh, I guess in terms of the gender equity piece, did you ever feel like you did have an unfair disadvantage or that someone was favored um, more than you uh, from a different gender? Um, I don't know if it's anyone necessarily was favoured, but definitely in consulting, and you'll probably know this, is there's a lot of culture of you go out, you socialise, you network, mm -hmm. and most of my teams were male. Mm. So, And it was really great, really supportive teams, but at the same time, there is that confidence 
in me being like, okay, I'm going to go forward for this promotion. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really confident. I'm really happy in comparing it to my male colleagues. And I would go in and think, okay, I, I've, I've kind of achieved it. I've, oh, I've not really achieved it. Mm-hmm. And thinking I'm, oh, maybe I shouldn't go for it. Maybe it's too much for mm. me to put myself forward for a promotion. Yeah. And even when I was applying to Kubrick, I would go through job applications and talk to one of my very good friends who is a CDO and entrepreneur and incredible, yeah. but he works in data. And I would send him an application. And I'd say, I think I can do 40% of this or 50%. I don't, I don't I think I should apply. And he would say, why would you not apply? I would apply for this. Yeah. Why would you not apply? Yeah. So I actually had that person who was every single time like, just do it. Yeah. If mm-hmm. you get the job, Learn it after. clearly you're fine. Yeah. And he said, I don't ever go through and I think I have to satisfy every single point, whereas mm. women do. Yeah. I think it's men think they have to do 60% of the job application, like mm. the description. Women are like, if I don't hit 100%, I'm not applying. Yeah, that's ve- that, that is very true. And that's very consistent with even your fact of what you're taught as a young person. I think that that carries out throughout your life. And it's rather than now going back and correcting everything, I think for the future and looking forward for future generations, yes. what are some of the mechanisms, especially from, from your perspective of working in the DEI space, mm-hmm. what are some of the, the mechanisms by which we can educate people to, to doing things early on that don't put them at a disadvantage um i know they come from different backgrounds and obviously Mm -hmm. there's certain things but is there anything you would recommend so uh i love to see parents getting involved especially with young children and it's really exciting for me to see like the books and the literature that's coming out now especially for kids there's so much positivity Mm -hmm. in there and so i think starting from that level is always good there is a book uh so i'm a twin mom and there is a book that i read to my little ones and it's called i love me and uh it's the different affirmations for every day of the week so i am powerful i am magical whatever and there's a part of me like well where was my magic when i was growing up right um i i want that for them but i also think Uh, our partnerships with women in data and girls in data and there are so many other groups out there I'm going to drop some names the STEMettes the STEM girls clubs that go into schools and and show them show young girls what is possible who they could be Mm -hmm. Uh, and those kind of programs really could shape the way that things work. Because I remember a time in my life where I didn't realize that gender inequity was a thing, right? Gender inequality was a thing. I had just come out of university. Mm -hmm. And when I went to school, it was an all girls Catholic school. All of the teachers were women. And then I went to university and I would say it was a solid 50-50 split of my lecturers, women and men. And there was exceptionalism on both sides. And then I went into my first workplace, my first job. And if I think about who the senior team was at that job at the time, it was almost perfectly split. And it wasn't split like, oh, the women are HR, finance, whatever. There were some heavy hitters in that group of executives. And I will be honest, it took me coming to the UK to be woken up to realize that isn't the way. And when I think about what gender gender equality is and what gender inequality brings, I I want, I want for women Mm. the day where, well, you don't know what gender inequality means because your whole life, it's been there, right? You don't even have to think about it. I would love to go back to that. Okay, that Dana was a bit naive. She needed a bit of waking up, but that was a good world, a good place to be. And I would love to see us get back there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think carrying on from that, uh, the st- you know, you being in a huge, at the moment, client that's lots of different layers, lots of different executive boards, lots of different you know uh, elements to it. Do you see... I know that you have a very strong female lead um, who's yeah. above you and I adore her, but um, it, what what would you say, you, do you see uh, the the inequity around you that's visible or do you think that it is layered? Um, I definitely think layered. I think, like you said, the advantage of having a client lead who is female and is incredible. Mm-hmm. I've never had, I've had it very, very rarely. And mm-hmm. the fact that she and 
both her equivalent on the other side of the department is also a woman is incredible and a really great place to work but I have noticed it within my own team so I have a mixed team I've got four men two women and I noticed that the men will go forward and say I've done this Mm. this is my project I've achieved all these things and then the women will say oh I haven't really done that much and I was like what have you done this week and they will list and I mean really list what they've Mm. done and I'll say, why are you, you should, you need to show this off. Mm, yeah. So every week I'll kind of say, you need to bring this up in meetings. You mm-hmm. need to be showing off what you're doing. And now they're just, they're so much more confident, but that needed work. Yes. And if, cause I just, from talking to them, they were like, oh, I, I don't really need to speak about this mm-hmm. or everyone knows what I'm doing, but no one did. Yeah. But mm-hmm. not having that for me, I think they're already at a disadvantage because yeah. if they're not pushing those things, if they're not having that self-confidence, then automatically they're thinking, okay, so this person is doing better than this yeah. person because he's yelling about it and she's not. So clearly mm-hmm. she's not doing well. And I think there is always that assumption that if you're not vocal about your work, you're not doing a good job yeah. when actually you're just quiet. I think it's like quietly brilliant I've yeah, seen somewhere. Yeah, it is. But that's, that's literally what it is. That's such a perfect example of the inequity because technically they're all on the same client placement everyone's on a level playing field mm-hmm. in theory the equality is there yeah. however that level of inequity where people are saying okay she's shyer so maybe i don't give her a stakeholder management project because she she maybe won't feel as comfortable liaising with different yeah. stakeholders you know whereas that's like you said not the case it's just inspiring them giving them the confidence to move forward and to vocalize and articulate mm-hmm. that they um can do the same things if not better if not you know even even stronger than than people who can roar louder than them so that's i think a a brilliant example um i want to kind of maybe make it more specific now to data and technology Mm -hmm. so um how have have you found that women uh, and non-binary people aren't often in the same starting um, position and in terms of access to opportunities what have you seen in this particular domain and world? I feel like this is a you question to start <laughs> off with. It's been a while since I've I've been actively in tech and I am conscious that the landscape has changed, maybe not as much as we want it to, mm-hmm. but the landscape has changed somewhat in, in the time yeah. that has elapsed yeah. many, many years. <laughs> Don't let the camera fool you. Um, <laughs> And, vibrate. We love it. <laughs> and I would like to hope that things are a little bit different now, yeah. but I definitely saw inequities when I was in technology consulting. Some of them were very in your face. Mm-hmm. So for example, um, when it was time for me to be promoted to manager, right. so at the time where I had done my time, yeah. so to speak, right? Yeah. Um, And I realized that the advertisement went out for it, but no one was talking to me Mm. about it, right? And so I went to my partner and I said, "Um, I want to go forward. Why wasn't I put forward? Mm -hmm. And he said, it's not your time yet, but we'll let you go this year just for a trial so that you know what it's like for next year when uh, you're ready for it. And I was like, what now? uh, there any, can I ask it? Because that's something that, that actually, f- for a previous role, um, I, I think Kubrick's, for me personally, it's been great. They've given me lots of opportunities for inv- advancement. But there's been previous roles where basically the exact same thing <laughs> happened. Like, let's see if you fit. Let's trial you out. And I'm like, quote unquote, Dave over there in the corner <laughs> did not did not get a trial run he was put forward for the position and he figured it out along the way like we all have to do right like sorry dave no, no, it's not a real dave i'm protecting his identity for gdpr purposes um it's a little data phrase um but no i i i just had the exact same experience of the trial run and so i didn't realize i think that that clearly is a way of of hiding it or sugarcoating the but inequity the of the inequality. I was the only woman. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, 
at at the time, and I was the only person not included <laughs> in the people oh, uh, God. who got f- put forward, right? Yeah. Um, and then there were certain things like appraisals. Yeah. So there were some very cutthroat approaches to appraisal in mm-hmm. those days. You'd get into a big room, they'd flash your photo up on a slide and the things you've done, and then those people in the room talk about you so they can do the ranking, right? The ranking wow. determines how much uh, of a bonus you get. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then the people on the last in the last quartile get performance managed, and it's a whole thing. So the ranking is really important. Yes. And your feedback from clients is really important to that process. So uh, when I fi- when I did get promoted, I started to sit in those consistency meetings. They call them. Sometimes they would flash up a photo of a woman, and the feedback would be amazing this person's mm. client feedback and then all of a sudden you'd hear a voice in the room but i'm not sure she has the appropriate level of gravitas yet what does that mean wow. and then all of a sudden she starts going down the ranking and nobody's even asking what does the appropriate level yes. of yes. of gravitas mean and then once there was this senior consultant who i adored i yeah. thought she was amazing and he was like no she doesn't have the correct level of gravitas and then i was like excuse me Sorry. What, yeah, what, what, what is the correct level? I don't think I've ever heard. I, I will be honest. I don't think I've ever heard the word gravitas be used to describe a, a man. I don't, I actually, and this isn't a men v women thing at all. But I'm just wondering, I was just like, the appropriate level of gravitas. She, I, that's quite a specific it, it was very specific. I don't know what that. very niche. Yes. Um, and the answer was, she had a high pitched squeaky voice. Oh, now, homegirl cannot change her entire <laughs> way of speaking I to be able to progress. I love your Trini accent. I think it's phenomenal. I, I would not change it for the world. But that's, wow. High-pitched yeah. voice. Is, it's the gravitas that, that they were referring the, to. That was the missing gravitas, Interesting. right? Interesting. And what's amazing is that that entire room of people, mm. men, women, and everyone in between alike, was colluding with this yeah. by not speaking up by not asking the question by not letting things like this slide yeah. okay another example would be she doesn't always present as client appropriate what does that mean she doesn't wear makeup uh, or, or there heels is or heels or something yeah or something yeah and you're just supposed to sit there and be like, oh, she doesn't. Man, my feet hurt. Do you know yeah. what's going on? I don't want to have to wear heels every day. That's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, no, that's that's a per- that's <laughs> perfect. I mean, look, that is a complete barrier to entry. If we're talking specifically about entering and you've already facing gravitas with a high pitchy voice and not wearing heels to, or presenting yourself well, I'm sure you wore suits and things that were appropriate or whatever it might have been, but... That's that's really interesting. I am praying, Hazel, when you joined, it was slightly different because this is horrible to hear. So I'm hoping you have some good stories about non, not feeling the same way, hopefully. I think, yes, definitely in Kubrick, 100%. We had a very similar laddering system where I would have to convince my manager yeah. that I was the best. And I'm, I used to have a method, so I would go through and I was like, what is the criteria for the promotion? And I would give them an Excel sheet where I said, here, like, this is my achievement, this is my achievement. And I had to go point by point. And I luckily had a really supportive male manager Mm -hmm. and he was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get you promoted. And he went in and he was confident. I don't know if Gravitas came up. (laughs) I really, I don't know if he would have said yes or no, or what it would have been. You have a lot of Gravitas, I'll give you that. But then, I know, I've I've worked with you for a long time, so yes. But I've had feedback where people have said, oh, you're a bit, you're quite quiet. I'm like, I tend to be quiet in meetings Mm -hmm. if I, don't have anything valuable to contribute. Mm. I don't want to also say, yes, I agree with that point because it's pointless, yeah. <laughs> but it's always been something against me mm-hmm. where people have said, oh, you're quite quiet. And I think, mm-hmm. but when I do say things, it's normally quite a good point. Yeah. I just don't want to say 300 other things that actually aren't relevant yeah. and lead us off on a tangent because we're wasting the rest of the meeting. Yeah. But I think, yeah, definitely with Kubrick, when I joined, there was no gravitas there was no discussion of that in my team there was no because i know you were a huge part in helping basically select my team there was no oh this person is you know we've got some men and some women you're like this is just your team there are Mm -hmm. six people they are all good at their jobs there was no different allowance or anything for oh she's a bit shy or Mm. he's really confident it was Mm. this is your team they have these skills Mm -hmm. go i yeah i i completely agree with that and i think 
obviously when we talk about equity, there does need to be that advantage to, to make up. But I always go off of people and their drive and what they want and their desire to do something men mm -hmm. women whoever there should be an opportunity for them all to present the best of themselves mm -hmm. and for people who need a bit more uh, encouragement and support and coaching like mm -hmm. you mentioned for them to be getting that opportunity so for me it doesn't come down well, when I was selecting the team and making sure you had a full stack roster. It was people who I thought would really gel well together, learn from each other and support each other upwards in that journey. Mm -hmm. And I think you, when we talk about um, equity, we also need people who are allies to help yes. that cause. Yes. You know, it, it, can't, it can't be us just as women championing each other. It has to be a, a recognized understanding that the equity comes before the equality, right? Well, so. it's been actually scientifically proven. Yeah. And then everybody listening is going to go where? And I should say, <laughs> in the show notes. I'll put it in the No, but there was this really big study that was done uh, about the impact of men coming forward as allies when it comes to... Uh, trying to bring about that state of gender equality. Mm -hmm. And it was proven that more gets done when others come along the journey. Yeah, it was a really interesting yeah. uh, piece of work and it showed how much more you were able to achieve yeah. because there is a little phenomenon called complainer syndrome. And what that basically says is that if you are raising an issue that affects you, mm -hmm. I will hear that, but I'm going to discount it by a certain amount because you are directly benefiting from this. However, when someone comes forward who has nothing to gain, really is seen to have nothing to gain yeah. from making this thing right, they are heard even more because it's like, oh, they have no skin in the game, but actually they think it's important. And so then it must really be important, yeah. which is why both sets of people are needed. Not to mention yeah. that men are fathers and uncles and helping to shape the next or friends of the family or whatever yeah. to the next generation who's yeah. coming up, right? Yeah. So from that perspective as well, we kind of need everyone to muck in and get on with this. I know, and I, I, I call me crazy. You can call me crazy. <laughs> I'm sure many people do. Um, but I don't think that it's that difficult of a, of a thing to do in terms of if you... If you just show your support, show your encouragement, mm. show your willingness to help and mentor and coach and provide and be a listening ear for someone who maybe is a bit shy and you you maybe just want to question why instead of writing them off as lacking yeah. of gravitas or any of these, <laughs> these, which actually is the word of the podcast for this one, it's gravitas. Um, I don't think anyone has used, this could be a, a game that people play. Like I don't, who can use the word the most? Um, but it, it, to me, it doesn't seem particularly arduous to recognize. But look how many things you listed. You were like, you got to do this, pay attention, volunteer to coach your mental health. Some people are just like, well, no. Mm. <laughs> but I, I mean, for, for a woman, I guess, because it, it, not even the multitasking thing, but I think yeah. in terms of I, I like seeing people come up from, yes. from feeling a certain way. That, yeah. that gives me a certain level of mm -hmm. joy. And I know that's not the same for absolutely everyone mm -hmm. but i personally find so much joy in, in telling someone oh why don't you try something this way or why don't you approach it this way and then they do it and it works and they feel so much better i just think that that's not if you just put little things into practice like that yeah. maybe that that becomes um business as usual rather than mm -hmm. having to actually focus your mind on mm -hmm. oh god now i've got to offer to mentor someone i've got to, <laughs> i've got to do one to one sessions on top of an already busy day god kill me like it's it doesn't seem um I don't know. Do you think that there are any actual steps that people can take that that kind of help out in the workplace, especially, I'm thinking, when it comes to that equity piece and, and creating that? I think you, we need two things fundamentally. Uh, the first thing is educating yourself, mm -hmm. right? So this podcast is a first step, yeah. but there are many other ways and you choose the one that works for you, right? If you say that you are interested in gender equity and in shaping what equality looks like for the next generation, yeah. educate yourself. Yeah. And then once we know better, we can do better, right? Uh, but that requires us to do the second thing, 
which is bloody pay attention. <laughs> so I feel like people miss a lot of things because they aren't paying attention. Inequalities are happening right in front of them. They can see the unlevel playing field, but because it's not affecting them directly, they don't see it and they don't take action. I think people need to hold themselves accountable to paying attention and then doing the third thing, which is then being able to take some kind of action, right? And I think... DEI is in an interesting space right now where uh, there's lots of guidance, when you use the correct Google search, on uh, steps and measures to kind of build build up, yeah. right? Yeah. Get to those gender equity steps, right? And so there will be things like coaching and mentoring and additional training, etc. Yeah. But I also want to say that these are guides but every single organization and organizational context is different. Yeah. So you can't just lift things and lift ideas and hope they will work. So as, as an example, uh, there is an NHS trust where they found that women who were qualified mm -hmm. to do certain roles and get certain promotions yeah. were not applying. And so if you were going into that situation, there are many things you could do. You could give them training to look at the jobs and apply. You could give them training to help with their CVs. For example, you could offer them mentoring. You could offer them one-to-one -one coaching. This trust actually did the work of delving deeper to figure out what the issue was. And the issue was that women were feeling disloyal for choosing to move on mm -hmm. to a different part of the organization, yeah. uh, to a different manager, et cetera. They felt like that was symbolic of disloyalty, right? And what they actually did to combat that, which was interesting, is they started having the person's manager mm -hmm. send out roles that they thought they were qualified for and encouraging them to apply. Wow. That's what I like to call radical gender yes. equity, right? Uh, and it was like the manager was in that move, giving them permission yes. and saying, I support you with this. And we actually had managers helping them with their applications. Mm -hmm. Now, they could have gone for the easy route. They could have done, okay, throw some coaching, throw some mentoring at them. But it wouldn't have had the impact yeah. of what ultimately became the solution. Yeah. So I guess my advice to organizations listening is don't be lazy, yeah. right? Don't just tick the box. Don't just go for the obvious things. Yeah. Really be curious about what is driving inequities and inequalities in the particular nature of your context. Yeah. And then be creative about how you solve and address those things things that's so brilliant yeah you're, you're right it's not a one-size-fits-all approach and I think that point of instant gratification instant change let's throw this word about and say that we've got a statistic here that proves that we're moving the needle in the right way um is not what needs to happen in order to safeguard the future generations because everyone knows it's like when you go I mean stupid analogy but it's like when you go to the the gym for or do a fad diet for a day versus <laughs> going to the gym and being consistent with something you're going to drop the pounds for like a week and then you go back to the gym and or you you stop doing that diet and then you pile the pounds back on mm -hmm. it's the same principle in terms of I do feel like this is such a huge issue and people throw these tag words and taglines about of equality gender equality we're doing this we're doing this but it's about listening to what is actually affecting what the actual inequalities are because mm -hmm. it may be that there aren't very many in your organization and you've done just a phenomenal job in terms of the org structure and how teams are structured that people feel supported and people feel great this isn't like a bashing exercise it's just knowing that you have to do what you can um to support your people in the correct way um how as as actually coming to you how do you feel like putting you slightly on the spot um do you maybe coach people in a different way because i know you have a very like a very uh set uh managerial responsibility for all the consultants that you manage so how do you go about trying to create as level playing field as possible? I think for my team, every single thing is tailored to the individual. So there are things that I know works for one consultant, whether they're male or female. Mm. So I know that their one-to-ones will be different. How mm. I approach their career will be different. Mm. If I recommend certifications, that will be completely different. Events, there are things that I'm like, this is relevant for all of you. Yeah. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what gender you are, but actually this is an event that you should all be taking part in. Mm. But then there are some things so like women in data, I saw it and was like, okay, there are two women in my team. 
and we're going, we're going as a team, the client team are going and it's been gonna be great. Yeah. But there are things like that where I think, and I do feel sometimes, am I being unfair to the men in my team that I'm also saying to the women, this is for you, this is only for you, this is a mm-hmm. women event, because I know it's open to everyone, yeah. but in me trying to push stuff towards them, am I trying to do more things that are equity rather than equality? But then I feel guilty in thinking, is that someone else gonna miss out on that opportunity? Yeah. When actually if there was an, an equivalent event or they know they can join, everyone can join. Yeah. But by pushing it more and saying, just go for it, mm. am I then disadvantaging everyone else? That's like a constant thing yeah. that goes, I'm sure goes through a lot of people's mm-hmm. minds. But actually I think that like you've both said, you can't be lazy as an organization. You can't just think, okay, great. So women want flexible working let's just put flexible work in the job description. And then you interview and they say, yeah, so we kind of want you in four days a week. That's not really flexible working because you might have to pick up your kids or have caring responsibilities or something three days a week. You're then not gonna go for the job. Mm -hmm. You can't just put these terms in and say, okay, yeah, we'll give competitive salary because Mm -hmm. actually when I look at a job description and there is no salary, like I'm gonna say 40K when actually their rate, like they were thinking 60 to 80k yeah. a man mm-hmm. is probably gonna say 100 i'm gonna low ball and they'll be like great yeah. 40k yeah. Sorted. <laughs> yeah but true. things like that that you actually need to be conscious about yes. you can't just say we've done these things yes. yeah tick box we're helping with equality and equity yes definitely part of our organization mm-hmm. but you actually need to put in the hard work mm-hmm. and not just release stats and be like it's it's great. It's, it's great. great. Just we've done it. We Here did we, it. We it. it. <laughs> if you believe you can achieve, like really yeah. big slogan style things. And I, I agree. I think sometimes, you know, it's not, I think it's because we've been also, like you said, from childhood raised to not mm-hmm. self-praise, to think, oh God, are we being unfair? Like, are we being too hard headed with this? Are we giving this person an advantage? But as you mentioned, it's about trying to level the historical inaccuracies and get everyone on the same playing field, which is the end goal of equality, right? Yes. Yeah. And by the way, as a manager, as you are, you started off by saying brilliantly that you treat everyone on your team as individuals. Yeah. When you say to someone on your team who is a man, for his, for example, this is an area where you need to up your level by recommending things that bring his level up. You are also leveling the playing field yes. for that person, yes, right? Totally. So we are constantly and always leveling playing fields and talking about gender equity is like, well, how are we doing this mm. for women? Yes. Right. Yeah. And that has to be OK. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's the conversation that has that it, it's always almost like a, a dirty phrase, because when you when you say something like it's correct and historical, yes, of course, we're you know, you're very forthright about the term that, yes, we are potentially giving women advantages, but why not? We haven't for so long. We're leveling the playing field so that everyone has that future equal access. Um, I think that's probably quite like whoa, you're admitting that we're giving advantages to women? That's quite... uh... Well, hell yeah, we are. But if you look at it another way, we're giving advantages to people who need them. Yes. Okay, in the UK, there was a pandemic. So some people (laughs) did not get... Uh, any like levels of advantages because they were okay, yes. right? But some people were to bring them up to that level. Yeah. If in that context it is okay, yeah. then otherwise it is okay because yeah. there are so many scenarios in the course of life where we don't even realize yeah. that it's happening that we do treat different groups differently based on need. Yes. That's and it. there is need. All the stories that we've told today about what has happened in the workplace in the past, yeah. what is happening now, shows that the need is there. So doing something to address that need, to redress. Yeah. 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 That's so that, it has that, to be okay. That's it. It's needs based. Whatever <laughs> someone needs, you try and do whatever you can to help them get to the level that they need to be. So it's a needs based thing. Actually, that I'm God, I'm so educated today. I feel <laughs> I feel I'm walking away from this a completely different person. Honestly, my brain is just expanded by like five times. This is amazing. Um no, but that's true. It's just a need if if you look at it in that way, I just feel like you you gotta reframe and rechange and just change the way that things are framed. 
and the narrative of things because when you do it on a needs based approach someone has income inequality mm -hmm. uh if someone has um you know comes from a disadvantaged background hasn't got the you know, quote unquote correct education to be doing something you want to give that person the opportunity to explore all the different avenues of access for them um and why should this be any different so i love that um i i would actually kind of like to get any experiences of when something that you've put into practice both of you from an equity or equality perspective has worked um and and maybe using that as a bit of a a guidance or a tip or something that you feel most proud of when pushing forward the um you know, equity and uh, equality discussion, anything that you've done in practice that's helped someone? So I feel like uh, women's networks always help. Brilliant, yeah. Uh, because it creates a community who have similar experiences to mm -hmm. you, who you can rely on for advice and challenge and so on. I'm proud to say that I've set up many, many of these. Uh, Do you, if you want to plug career. any of and them. And I'm this totally going to plug one you right go. now. I'm not even fussed. Uh, <laughs> the Women's Network at Kubrick is launching really, really soon. Super it's exciting. such an exciting time to have a community that is working together. By the way, allies are welcome, right? Working together mm -hmm. to help bring some gender equity here at Kubrick even more than we're doing right now. Yeah. And not just at Kubrick, but wider society, because sometimes I think we forget how powerful we are mm -hmm. as an organization and what we could be doing for others outside of the organization. Right. I hope that you'll join us for either the virtual launch or the in-person launch. Get a ticket. I know I'll be there. <laughs> so yeah, every uh, no, that's, that's incredible. Is that something that's been your first, one of your first initiatives since you've Come to Kubrick or? Yeah, it's it's going to be one of the first things. And it's because the feedback from the focus groups and the survey yeah. uh, was like screaming it at me. Yeah. And I was like, no, there's no way we can't do this. <laughs> and it should be one of the first things that we do. Yeah. So for me, creating community and creating a space where you can be open and honest mm -hmm. in protective comfort and safety yeah. about experiences you're having in the workplace and get experience from those who have walked the roads before who can tell you the how and the why yeah. is critical right. right I mean you get into a room of women and you say I have to negotiate my salary at my client you wait to see how those women have got you yeah. you wait yeah. a woman's network is like a powerful space but then you have allies who would be like here's how I do it and I remember the first time a male friend told me how they negotiated my mind was blown and I was like is this how you do it yeah. wow and with Without having an ally, I would never have had access to that information. So let's have each other, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, from your perspective, Hazel? I mean, firstly, I will just say the Women's Network, I saw the email, got incredibly excited, <laughs> pinged my whole team and was like, this is open to all. However, <laughs> this is incredibly interesting. Please join and go to either the in-person or the virtual event. This girl's the biggest plug ever. <laughs> like you just say, forget my podcast. You'll get this on Twitter, on Facebook, <laughs> on Instagram. Forget, forget it, honestly. Just send it to Hazel. She's got your back. You volunteered them. I, I genuinely was like, it's obviously open to all. However, please go check your Kubrick emails. It's on there. It's Women's Network. It's really exciting. We've not had this before. Because I was the same. I was thinking, actually, this is a great opportunity because I have two women in my team. Yeah. We have female leadership at my client, which is quite rare and unusual. Mm -hmm. We're quite lucky. And I'm like, I do tend to push things. And I see something which is for women in tech. And I will say to the two women in my team, this is a great opportunity. Yeah. I'm not forcing you to do it. These are the resources. If you need mm. support, I'm here. And in their one-to-ones, I'll make sure I'm coaching them through things. So you've done an incredible job. Yeah. I want to shout about this. Yeah. You should be shouting about this. And I see the confidence now and them taking on more and more work and the mm -hmm. clients saying, actually, like they're doing so well. Absolutely. And just the feedback that you get from the client, you're like, that's, she's amazing. Or, they're doing their job in the best way. Yeah. And they're just skyrocketing. <laughs> but things like that, like Women's Network. So we had, there was a woman in data event the other day. Mm -hmm. And there was a woman who genuinely had taught data science. She's a lecturer in data science. And she said to me, I'm unqualified to work in data. And I was sitting wow. there like, but you probably know more than I ever will. Yeah. How do you think you're not qualified? But by coming to that networking event and talking to people and us just saying, I think just apply was the phrase I said the most mm -hmm, that yeah. evening. And I was like, just go, don't do it. 
But if you don't go to that event, if you are at home and you are mm-hmm. looking at these job applications and thinking, oh, I'm not really sure, or mm. salary negotiations is mm. so tricky and people don't talk about their salary. Mm. Yes. You're Which instructed is not to. You're told not to for most of the time. So it's not it's not encouraged by any means. But that's such a key resource. So actually saying, be open, talk to your colleagues. Yes, absolutely. I found in my old job that actually my male friend was earning more than me and we're the same level. Mm-hmm. I don't really understand what's gone on here. Why is mm-hmm. this happening? Except that you probably asked for a lower figure and they just haven't counted it. Yeah. yeah. So if you don't have those conversations, if I don't bring that to my team and say, look, this is a network, go be part of it. I can only make you do so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But by including you in those conversations, you can then work out what, like, where am I not getting this right? What is happening for me that for someone else, they're just going through, they're getting all the promotions, everything's going really well. Why am I kind of stagnating when I'm doing really incredible work? Yeah. Right. Right. I think it is important that you do, and like the woman's, I'm so excited. No, I am <laughs> Genuinely, too, it was just the best email. Are you, are, you, are you leading it? Like you're leading the whole like seminar, everything. You've got the whole group chat set up and everything. I will set up a WhatsApp group chat. <laughs> I was chat. just going to say, please set up a WhatsApp group I will group WhatsApp for a WhatsApp group chat for 150 women if I need to. I'm, I'm a big fan of the WhatsApp group chat. So let's let's do it. Um, I was going to actually ask you another question is, what other benefits do you think for companies that fully <laughs> embrace gender equity like the actual tangible benefits mm. of companies that that embrace it okay so you're gonna ask me for this again it's in the show notes uh <laughs> are there show notes uh, I, don't even... <laughs> I don't i don't i don't actually it up. i'm winging it no but there's another piece of uh piece of research <clears throat> sorry that shows for every i think 10% of women or something that you increase, it increase your profits by 2 to 4% overall. Wow. So I think, you know, the money is there. But also, if you are in a room of exactly the same people from the same background trying to solve a problem, everyone is going to think of the same solution, mm-hmm. right? <sighs> Diversity brings us diversity of thought it brings us new ways of seeing things it brings us new ways of interpreting things we are a data company the insights from data vary on who's looking at the data set right okay so from that angle the the benefits are there but i also feel like if we're if we're not talking generally and we're we're just speaking about kubrick i feel like clients are looking at us to be a leader in this particular space so being able to get it right is important because saying that you support women is not just about the 40 percent it's what happens after the 40 percent come into the organization right 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 yeah Absolutely. No, I, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. I think that th- those to me seem like real tangible benefits that you could go to an exec board or a leadership board or a, uh, you know, um, investor meeting mm-hmm. and take on as this isn't just like a, oh, we're doing this airy fairy thing. Mm-hmm. These are real things that are going to move the company forward oh, in a positive yeah. direction. So couldn't agree more. Um, would you say from your experience working cross consulting and now at on client site again do you see the tangible benefits of you altering the ways that you work with people and giving those advantages yeah definitely and i think having diverse opinions i can go into a meeting and think this is my perspective and then someone will say something like i that is someone else's complete experience Mm -hmm. i haven't even thought of any of that so in terms of actually if someone's disabled what do they look at their Mm. life looks completely different to Mm -hmm. mine we need to make sure that's included yeah but also so when i was doing research in thinking about equity and equality um female-led startups they get a better return on investment than male-led startups but not just at year one it's year one year five year ten so it's consistently the return on investment if you're a venture capitalist i think it's between two and nine percent is like the most investment that female-led startups get yeah. but actually for in terms return on investment they're the strongest mm-hmm. consistently mm. and people don't consider that it's actually well are they thinking of things like flexible working yeah. are they looking at it from a different perspective if you have a board that is just male you're going to get one perspective yes. you will all tend to think roughly the same way right. but mm-hmm. if you get a board that is mixed you have different opinions Mm -hmm. you have people who have different life experiences Mm -hmm. so actually the outcome is going to reflect everyone and not just a general 
male perspective. It needs to include all genders. When we are then discussing equity in terms of men and women, we want to also include men, women and everything in between to coin a, a Dana <laughs> phrase. So absolutely, I wanted to get your perspective and your take on how we approach that slightly differently or whether we approach it with the same um, sort of equity lens in a sense. So uh, obviously it's International Women's Day. Yeah. So I understand that the focus of this has been mainly on women, which is right. But I think it's just important to note firstly that when we are talking about gender equity, right? It's it's gender equity for all of the groups who yeah. have been disadvantaged across history, right? And it's about raising the level for all of those groups. So I am talking about all our people in between when I talk about them as well. And so these apply to women, but it also applies for those groups as well. Now, the measures may be different. And by the way, again, they should be different because I just told you about context, right? So the context that you're in is really important and matters, but it's important to, to bear that in mind. And sometimes when we use the language of men and women only, when we're talking about gender, yeah. right, we lose that discussion space in between and we set up a binary when gender is in and of itself fluid and non-binary right yep. that's the first thing and i just also want to say in international women's day and in this discussion as well we need to think about intersectionality so we've been talking about women as if they're a homogenous group but really they aren't mm -hmm. and so there are nuances there right so you can be a woman and from a minority ethnic background you can be a woman and disabled you could be a woman and a mom you could be a woman and child free etc and all of those experiences are different yeah. why am i making a point of this because when we start thinking about diversity of thought yeah. and the benefit of having um women in the workplace, etc. It's important to remember that with women, you're getting, it's multiple lenses, yes, right? Absolutely. It's multiple lenses. And it's also just a reminder as we move on from this to not treat women, all women, as exactly the same, right? Because that's not what we want. No. There is individuality within the group. So we're looking at the macro perspective, but also remember there is a micro perspective that is individual. And so when we are thinking about addressing inequities and raising the level, we might need to do some additional things for you yeah. and some additional things for me and some additional things for you, mm -hmm. right? So it's about yes for women, but also not losing the individual right. in the discussion that we're having. I think that's, that sums it up perfectly because honestly, that's that lends itself to everything that we've been speaking about, the way that you approach people on an individual basis, mm -hmm. the way that we have to take into circumstances that something that's like a banner term of flexible working, you've got to be flexible for mums, for people who yeah. have, um, you know, have a, a disadvantage or a disability, uh, so people who can't make it in for whatever reason to do with bereavement. It's all mm -hmm. of these different elements that come together that make up women across the uh, across the board and i think that it's really important that we discuss that across men women and everything in between as well so it's about creating an equal playing field which will be the end result of gender equality which hopefully is right around the corner please god please. um and today today <laughs> but the steps that we are taking um are really aligned with gender equity and that's been um the the main theme for international women's day this year and i'm so glad that i've had both of you on um to talk about it hazel i'll start with you any final words before we wrap up um i was literally thinking about a similar thing because i know when i was doing my research a lot of it was women and men and i was like there are actually a lot of things that because i am white i have a lot more privileges than someone else because mm -hmm. i'm a woman there are things that i have that are disadvantages mm -hmm. but actually I don't need as much help as other people. Mm -hmm. We need to not think, okay, women as a whole, we will give you these things. Actually, no, I, can, I need one or two things. Someone else might need four or five yeah. if they are a different race, different religion. Mm -hmm. There are so many different things that you need to allow for. Yeah. And actually, I'm probably in a lot more privileged position than a mm -hmm. lot of people. There are things that we have in common, but actually, like, target people based on their need like mm -hmm. you keep saying not on your woman your mm. man your something in between <laughs> we need to be more individual than that and i think yeah. that's the main thing that i take in my role is okay i'm not approaching you as a man or as a woman i'm approaching you as a person mm -hmm. what are your needs 
is there anything that I need to allow for that means you're at a disadvantage? Let's work on that. Agreed. Let's build that one out. Agreed. I love that. I love, love that. that. I love that as well. I think for me, there are lots that organizations do in honor of International Women's Day, but I just want to remind everyone about the theme, which is embracing equity, and remind you that you can also take some personal responsibility mm -hmm. and accountability yeah. for how you educate yourself, first of all, but also what what are you going to be doing to embrace equity yeah. this International Women's Day? Can you come up with at least one thing that you're going to do consistently yeah. across the rest of the year that can help redress some kind of imbalance that you're yeah. seeing in your particular context? And if everybody chooses one, we'll get there faster, Absolutely. is what I'm saying. Absolutely. Even if it is the education, right? Like yes. It starts with education. Absolutely. And I think once we get that first step, it's all about taking the right steps towards the end goal. And yes. the equity is the middle portion, which we all have to do little bits to contribute towards. So um, I couldn't agree with both of your perspectives more. I'm so happy that I've had both of you on. Honestly, it's been an amazing episode. I told you, I feel 10 times smarter than when I stepped into this room, <laughs> completely frazzled from all my meetings. But I, I am so happy that I had both of you on. And um, I'm, I'm hoping we can do a part two to this. Yeah, yeah. We, I, I think that we've got loads more to talk about. But I hope that this was really, really, really helpful for everyone. Happy International Women's Day for everyone who is um, everyone who's tuning in. And I really hope that you take some uh, some tangible lessons from this and go forward and and hopefully help the cause. And um, yeah, it's been great to have both of you on. Thank, Thank you. you. Perfect.